Hello, this is Steven Allen. Yes, we're back with yet another Batman 66 episode review. Today, we'll be reviewing the episode, The Duo Defied, the final episode of Season 2, and will mark the last time we will ever see Mr. Freeze. So without further ado, let's hop into the review. When we last left off the dynamic duo, they were trapped in a giant sub-zero temperature vapor vaporizing cabinet that is essentially will which essentially will freeze the dynamic duo to death opening credit and of course it seems that they have been completely vape uh well vaporized however mr freeze does know for a fact that they that they will be discovered and so he and his entire gang along with professor isaac is to make their way to the iceberg however it's found out the dynamic duo escaped their terrible cabinet by an emergency exit and after waiting until the f until mr freeze has departed they make their appearance by a, a Sotal's seal house. Now that is a very lame way to escape that situation, but it does make it a little bit funny. It has also been noted that Isaac has finally given in and has given the formula to Mr. Freeze to make a deadly ice ray. And, and as a result, he intends to freeze all of Gotham City and possibly the entire country until his demands are given. To prove his word, he uses the ice ray to freeze up certain parts of Gotham City, including the back computer, which just so happens to be that. As a result, Batman realizes he has to track down Mr. Freeze. Now, courtesy of Gordon, who has placed a homing device on, on the seal, and it turns and has released the seal back into Gotham Harbor. Batman and Robin then quickly hop back into the Batcopter and fly around trying to track down where the hell uh, Mr. Freeze's hideout is. It's also noted that Mr. Freeze is hiding in his iceberg, but he's turned on all the ice magnets to bring in all the icebergs into Gotham, into the Gotham Harbor in order to make it harder for Batman and Robin to, fu uh, to find him. Just as that's happening, Gordon... Gordon is doing everything he can to get all his men ready to go onto the onto the icebergs to apprehend Mr. Freeze. Just as that's happening, we also find out that he said that he, we also get a little bit of foreshadowing for the next season when Gordon says he'll be late to pick up Barbara at the airport and to catch a later flight, as we are about to introduce and be introduced to yet a new character for the next season. We then go back to Mr. Freeze and his men, essentially in the iceberg, talking coming up with possible demands for, you know, well, for the ransom that they all want, but it's also that they are also writing down, but also writing down, um, the, you know, that Batman and Robin are dead and are having a huge hoot out of it, but to their surprise, Batman and Robin arrive. But Isaac makes the opportunity to quickly make his escape, and Mr. Freeze once again whips out his iconic freeze gun and prepare, and tries to, well, freeze Batman and Robin, but to his shock, it is not yet again working because they're wearing skivvies. And as a result, the final fight for the season breaks out, and it's a really enjoyable one, with a different music this time around, overall fun, and of course, once again, Eli Wallach once again, honing some comedic moments, which I am laughing at throughout. But of course, since this is the second part, Eli, Mr. Freeze, and his men are quickly apprehended just as Gordon, Chief O'Hara, and all their men quickly pop aboard and end up taking Mr. Freeze and his men away, along with Glacier Glaze. However, Batman says Emma Strunk is just as guilty. She is offended, but he does tell her, you may be known as Glacier Glaze to the rich and famous, but to the crime fighting, your name will always be Emma Strunk. She is then taken away. And just as everything is getting wrapped up, Batman takes out a little a little fish to give to Seal as a little treat. We then end the episode with Aunt Harriet, Alfred, Dick, and Bruce all in the game room, you know, having a good time and a laugh, ending the episode saying that they will get some fun, uh, rest in peace and hope, you know, and it's a fun scene and it really goes to show that Bruce is a really... Is kind of a family man. He sees Dick as a son, Alfred as arguably the closest thing to a father figure, and Aunt Harriet as just a nice, lovable, you know, aunt to have around. And it's fun that they end the episode like that. And here we end not just this episode, which will be the last time we would see Mr. Freeze in the 60s TV show, 
but also the end to season two. No one here really has changed, really. The little scene with Alfred and, and Harriet at the end are all fun. And it and honestly, this will be kind of for a while. The last time Aunt Harriet would have a huge role in any episode. Dick, Dick, Bruce, Batman, Robin, Alfred, uh, Alfred Chief O'Hara, Commissioner Gordon, all fun as always. But the kind of feels there's really no character development with any of them. But that's kind of going to happen when we head into Season 2. Uh, it's not season two, it's season three. And of course, let's talk about the villain. Eli Wallach, for me, gives a completely different interpretation of Mr. Freeze compared to his predecessors. Though he is villainous, he plays it more hammered up as a more cartoony supervillain slash mad scientist. And I love the comedic moments. He may not be my preferred take, but I really love him. And he does manage to make the role heavenly his own, and this was arguably his most popular role, as apparently, according to behind the scenes, he got a lot of fan mail just from this one role, then all his movie roles apparently combined. For me, he is a truly brought a different incarnation to Mr. Freeze. He may not be liked by many, as he's more too comedic compared to George Sanders and Otto Preminger playing it more serious. But I like that it's completely different, and it really goes to show just how different Season 2 was. But like I said, after this, Mr. Freeze never came back. And it's, and even though I'm sad, I can see why. So far, Mr. Freeze has made six appearances, each time in each two-part portrayed by a different actor, giving a different portrayal. As a result, there was really no actor to really stay to continue the role. And because he was portrayed different times, it can feel as inconsistent to his portrayal, and that kind of will explain why Mr. Freeze never came back. And with that, it is real shame, because Mr. Freeze is such a really great act, uh, great character. I can also see why he wouldn't have come for Season 3, because of the budget slash, Mr. Freeze has would use up the more of the special effects, and they barely have enough, and the budget was so slash they couldn't even contribute to that, so I could see why he would have possibly have never come back. Because they couldn't write a, uh, stories for a good Mr. Freeze story for season 3. It's kind of sad, but at least he went out for me with a decent episode. Instead of a weak one. Also here is Glacier Glaze. And this actress who seemed familiar, she was... Um, in actually appeared in Batman before. In fact, she appeared in the first season. Um, in the, Peng in the Penguin's first two-parter. As Don Robbins, the uh, movie star, she plays the character a uh, different character here, and it's not the first time where um, female actors in Batman are getting re will be reused. And she plays a different character. I'm kind of model why she would be in on Mr. Freeze's caper, but it is what it is, and it's just a nice little notice. The Do It Defy is a fun episode. It's not terrible by any stretch of the imagination. But it's also not as exciting. As a result, this was as a result, this two-parter was a pretty okay way for me to end this season. But it also felt, and I can't admit, a little bit feels like it was a little bit above the pang when we ended season one with the penguin. It makes sense to end the season with an established villain, and Mister Freeze, who is more spectacular, made sense to do so. Honestly, I don't mind this. Overall, how do I personally feel about Season 2? Season 2 is arguably, I think, where the show jumped the shark. First season managed to be campy, but still stay kind of real and even more serious. Here, it went full overboard. Granted, it was camp campy and silly, but it was also bright and colourful. Also, what it probably didn't help was a lot of new villains were introduced this season, but very few came back after their first appearance. We spent, a f in fact, the majority of this first, the first half of season two, we spent in company with getting introduced to a lot of new villains, with new villains, and really the anchor villains, the main anchor villains, never came back. Uh, never really came until, I think maybe ha a little bit halfway with Penguin, then the anchors came back. Now I understood why, because they were so overused in seasons one and the movie. I would, I would admit, it's a good to keep a break of them. Also, and to be fair, also in this season, some villains that were introduced in season... Uh, one of the anchor villains that were introduced in season 1 came back. King Tart and the Mad Hatter and Mr. Freeze. 
Old Meg reappearances. But sadly, the Mad Hatter and Mr. Freeze, that would be their last appearance. Some villains that were introduced this season did come back for another episode. Marsha being one, after her appearance, she teamed up with Penguin for a three-parter, but Egghead and Shame will appear again in season three. Also, Frank Gorshin's Riddler was completely absent, so as a result, to compromise, we got the Puzzler, who was a poor man's version of the Riddler, and not a very good character, I would say. And John Ashton, who was fine and did a very interesting portrayal, he was just no Frank Gorshin. Also, this season also gave us the first ever superhero crossover. I can enjoy this season for what it was, it's a fun season, but you can't deny it jumped the shark. Also, what didn't help is, the first season had 34 episodes. This had 60, making it the longest episode in the series, longest you know, longest amount of episodes. As a result, we were tired by this, and a lot of lame villains were, and as a result, for people to say a lot of lame villains were introduced, I don't think all of them were lame, but a good portion were okay to bland. Like I said, if you introduce a new villain, at least bring them back for a second round, and not just leave them after their one appearance. As a result of this, season three will be drastically changed and will be introduced to a completely new character. And there we have it, the duo to fire is a co okay to fun episode just like the first part of was. This will be the last time we'd see Mr. Freeze and season 2 would end. After this season, the show would drastically change in both format and with the budget slash. In order to save the show from what seemed to could be its final season, the creators decided to bring in a new character. So they went over to DC and told them to introduce a character in the comics just as season 3 was about to, re was about to commence with the introduction to Batgirl to be one of the to be making her debut in outside of the comics in any form of Batman medium. So without further so until next time when we do review season three, tune in for them for the same Stephen Hour, the same Stephen channel, ladies and gentlemen, so long for now.